hearing God speak. Just hearing God speak. I, I just want to teach one point on, 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 on what we need to do to hear God speak. And this was ironic because I was reading from this passage of Scripture yesterday during my quiet time. And, and uh, as I was trying to find a message that I wanted to pull information from, I ran across this old message, and it was just like God was just flashing. This is the one. This is the one. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. I want to talk about Samuel. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord was very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in a tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up, and he ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up, went into Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. That is key right there. At this juncture, Samuel did not know the Lord. He was not familiar. He was not common with the Lord. He, wasn't, uh, he didn't know how God operated, how he spoke. People get so battled because they don't know everything about God. Just operate in the knowledge and the know-how that you have. When God wants your attention, he'll get it. So Samuel did not know the Lord. Because he had not had a message from the Lord before, so the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli, here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go lie down again, and if someone calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. In this text, we see three relationships. We see a relationship between Eli and Samuel. We see a relationship between God and Eli. And we see a relationship between God and Samuel beginning to be awakened. Israel was going through a time of difficulty. It, 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 it says in some of the Bibles that I studied that, that it was a dark time in Israel. Man. I hadn't seen it till now. He said it was a dark time in Israel. But listen to this. In the book, in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see the first king. We see the first king ever. And the last judge. And we see the first prophet coming on the scene of Samuel. In a time of darkness, God did something brand new. In a time of darkness, God did something that no one had ever seen before. Mm. Okay, okay. So we have to understand in a time, darkness doesn't phase God. Politics doesn't phase God. Government doesn't phase God. I'll tell you what phases God. It's when his people get on their face and cry out before him. That phases God. Someone who wants to, to, to know what the, the secrets of God is, who wants to hear the heart of God, who wants to get caught up in the spirit and not caught up in all the chaos around them. It could be chaotic all around us, but we can get into the heart of God and there is peace. So in the darkness, God was doing something brand new. And in this time, Eli, the high priest's house, was under judgment because of disobedience. Now get this now. The call of God was being awakened in one, but lulled to sleep in another. And it wasn't because of who they were. It was because of what they were after. 
Mm. The high priest Eli had been given a word from God that you better get your two sons. His two sons were, were major priests in the tabernacle. They carried out worship duty. They carried out godly duty, but they were living in sin, and they were doing whatever they wanted to. You can read Scripture. They were sleeping with women in the church. And God gave Eli a message, you better get your boys under control, and Eli just disregarded it. We cannot disregard sin. You cannot disregard You can't just let things go on. When something takes place, you have to deal with it. There's been times in this church that that, that sin has erupted, even in the staff, and we dealt with it. And some people didn't ever know anything about it. But then there was some who did know about it. Well, I don't like the way you dealt with that. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. We sought the Lord. We got on our face till we got on God's face. And when he gave the command, that's what we did. It isn't about whether you please people. It's just about whether you can hear from God and go after the heart of God. You don't sweep sin under a rug. You don't act like it doesn't exist. And at the same time, you don't condemn people because they fell into sin. Because no one is above it or beyond it. Nobody. Not even you. Or me. Or anybody. So so Eli's house was in judgment. In this, we see one relationship being lulled to sleep because of disobedience and sin, yet another relationship being awakened, hearing God speak, point number one. To hear God speak, you must position yourself to hear his voice. Number one, you position yourself. And and can I just say something? That position is not this. It isn't this. It isn't this. It isn't this. It isn't a physical position. It isn't, I'm not getting down all the way down. If God tells me to, I will, but that's that's a long time to get back up for me anymore. It isn't about the physical position. It's about this position. Some of you are going to be battled over this message. Because some of you have gotten tired of trying to make sure this is right and in position. And you're still not hearing anything. And that the devil will tell you that you've been lulled to sleep and the devil is a liar. And the only thing, man, I tell you, I sense this. The only thing I can tell you tonight is don't get discouraged in well-doing. You just keep on getting before God. And maybe you won't hear him for another three months. But, man, there's going to be a day when he's, when he's just going to speak to you and it's going to be worth it all. One second in hearing God speak. One second in his presence is worth three months or three years of silence. So many times I think that in church we've gotten so common with God moving and so common with with hearing God speak. We don't value it anymore. Wow, here we go. And then we begin to question what's wrong with the church? What's wrong with the church? I think I'm going to leave that church and I'm going to find me a new church. And the problem isn't the church. The problem is our heart. Because we've gotten common with God. We've gotten so familiar that we don't value. We don't value when anyone gets saved anymore. We don't value when we see a miracle anymore. It's just, oh, well, well, you know, someone wasn't raised from the dead, so it's no big deal. We don't value when we get a $100 bill anymore. We were out with our granddaughter Monday, and, and I still had some Christmas money in my wallet. And, um, 
and we, she, she loves to eat Mexican food, so we were out there, and, and we had green peppers on my plate, and uh, a sailor cannot stand vegetables at all. And uh, she's picking the little vegetables out of her rice. She loves rice, but she's picking the little vegetables out. And I'm like, you, 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 there's no way you can taste that. You're, there's just no way. And I said, I'll tell you what, sailor. I said, I'll give you a $5 bill if, if, you just, if you just take a green pepper and put it in your mouth, chew it up, and swallow it. Nope. I said, and I, I, pull, I pulled some money out of my wallet. I'll be honest with you. I had $283 in my wallet. And I pulled it out, and I said, how about this? And I, I, I brought the ones over. Nope. Brought the fives. No. How about the 20? Nope. How about the 50s? I had three 50s. Nope. I said, how about, how about the 100? Nope. I'm not trying that for you. You don't have enough money, Poppy. <laughs> Go ahead and make that offer to me. Now, now, I don't understand this because her dad, her daddy, Evan, I remember one day somebody, when he was a kid, somebody said, I'll give, Evan, I'll give you $5 if you take a handful of hot pepper seeds and throw them in your mouth. Get it out, he said. He threw them in his mouth. He turned all kind of red and different colors, but he got his $5. Now, she doesn't know the value of a $100 bill, but you do. And when we get a $100 bill anymore, we don't see it as a gift from God. We see it as generosity from someone else, or we give someone else credit. And you better give God credit because he was the one that gave it to you. We started to overlook God. We, see, we, we don't see God in anything. It's because we don't recognize him in anything. Oh, he's in it all around us. That's just like when I come down with COVID. I'm thinking, man, I didn't have hardly any symptoms at all. Isn't this wonderful? And God said, I did go before you, and I had you on antibiotics three weeks before you ever got, every, every, before you ever got diagnosed with COVID. I went before you and prepared the way, and I saw God in it. We need to learn to see God in what's taking place around us and value. Don't get common with him. So position yourself to hear the Lord. Verse 1. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. No one wants to assist anybody anymore. Everybody wants to be the man or the woman. Everybody wants to be the one out front. And can I tell you that sometimes when you're assisting, it's more valuable than being the one. Well, time's running out. I gotta, I gotta, I, 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 I gotta do this. I gotta do something. And I think many times God's called us to assist when we want to run out ahead of and make a name for ourselves, do something for ourselves. And what you have to understand, there's. There's senior pastors, there's associate pastors, assistant pastors, and neither one of them is more valuable or more important than the other. The value is each one being in their proper place. Because a senior pastor can never do what he's called to do without the associate pastor or, or whatever pastor. The senior pastor can't do what the senior pastor is called to do without the worship pastor. So stop running around trying to make a place for yourself and just assist where God tells you to assist. We're all just assisting. So Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord was very rare and visions were quite uncommon. Rare, there was rare meaning that it was very valuable, that it was precious the Lord didn't speak often, and there was no frequent vision, but when he did, it was valued. Are you with me? But look what Samuel did. Unknowingly, he served with the knowledge that he had. He may not even known why he was there. He served in the way that he was taught. That's why when the Lord spoke to him, he went to Eli. Because many times, my God, many times when God begins to speak to us, it sounds like someone who has authority in our life. Because it gets our attention. 
So he is serving with the knowledge that he has. This is a picture of the 2021 challenge, y'all. Get this. He put himself before the Lord. (laughs) The only thing that, that Samuel did is he put himself before the Lord. He really didn't even do it. His mama did it. If you read the whole text, he didn't do it. He didn't even know why he was there. His mom did. His mom said, God, you give me a son. I'll give him back to you, and he'll serve you all the days of his life. So God gave her a son, and he gave, and she gave him back to God. So she really positioned him before the Lord. He, he put himself before the Lord. This means to be before the face of. Emily, you have three kids, right? How many of those three kids likes your attention? (laughs) Mommy, look at me. Mommy, look at me. I was thinking about my stinking cat today. Now, I love my cat. It isn't my cat. It's my wife's cat, but the cat doesn't know it. (laughs) The cat thinks she's mine. I don't know what it is with these cats that they always want to be around the people who don't want them around. Can I get an amen? amen. I, I mean, it's just like they, they, it's like they have a sense of irritation about them. Yeah. It's like they're anointed with irritation yeah. that I know you don't like me, so I'm going to rub up against you and get my hair all over you. I can't stand that. Well, this cat was feeling real needy today. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. It's like cats are hormonal. I'm not afraid till I get in the car to go home, man. It's like a menopausal woman. Hormonal. And today, the hormonal cat just wanted to be next to me. And every time I'd walk through the house, right in front of me, almost tripped me a couple times. But what did she do? She put herself before me. To the point that I paid attention to her. I'm thinking, what do you need? Some water? Let me go get you some water. You need some food? Let me get you some food. Oh, you want brushed. So as soon as I pull the drawer out, she starts doing her little dance all around me, all the way into the family room. And I sit down at the hearth. That's the, that's the position right there. I sit down at the hearth, and she just comes right over to me. And I just begin to stroke her with that brush. And she's like, oh, yeah. And she humps that back up and her tail up in the air. And then, then I start stroking her side. She flops down on her belly, and she spreads her legs like this, like, give my belly, like right here, you know. And, and I just, but she irritated me. Until I gave her my attention. Don't the kids do that to you, Emily? Sometimes they'll even get into a little uh, trouble so you'll pay attention to them. All the while, they are putting themselves before you. All that God wants. And he won't get irritated with you. (laughs) And you won't get in trouble. But all that he wants is for you to be in his face. All he wants is for you to put yourself before him. Samuel positioned himself to hear by putting himself in the face of God unknowingly. He did it with the knowledge that he had. This means taking time to wait on God. This is the 2021 challenge. It's taking time, that 10 minutes, that 5 minutes, that's 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes, just putting yourself in the face of God. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's times I get up, today was a struggle. I, 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 I was up late last night with uh, the deacons meeting, and I, I worked out yesterday for the first time this year, and I'm going to be honest, this 52-year-old body gets sore. And when it gets sore, it doesn't like to move. You all who are in your 30s, you just wait. There's glory waiting you. And, 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 and when that alarm clock went, or when, when it was time to get up, m- many times what I do, oh, 
you don't have to do this. This is just how I do it. Many times I won't set the alarm clock. I'll just say, God, you get me up when you want me to spend time with you. And sometimes those 6 a.m. mornings are rough, man. But to get up out of bed, and there's times I go, it's like, okay, God, you got me up. Now let's go. Let's go. Feed me. Talk to me. And I hear nothing. I sense nothing. I feel nothing. But by God's grace, I've been at it long enough. <laughs> the not hearing, not sensing, not, not, not seeing anything doesn't discourage me. Because I know one day he's going to pull back that veil. I know one day he's going to say, hey. Because I've been at it long enough. And there's seasons you'll go through and it's just like he just, he, he just wants to talk to you all the time. And then there'll be a season where it just seems like it's silent. The key is this. In the silence, don't get discouraged. In the silence, don't give up. In the silence, don't let the devil put shame on you. Because he's still there. Tell your neighbor, he's still there. It's taking time to wait on God. How many of you uh, are married to a woman? No, these ladies better not raise your hand. You ever heard that song, Waiting on a Woman? I know it's a secular country song, shame on you, but I like it because that's my life. I'm waiting on a woman. Always waiting on a woman. We're going to go somewhere. I'm waiting on a woman. We go somewhere. I'm waiting on a woman because she's valuable to me. My God. This side of heaven, there's no one else I'd rather wait for than my wife because she looks good while I'm waiting. She thinks she isn't always together, but to me, she's always together. And I'm waiting on her. And I've spent enough time with God to let you know he's worth waiting on. And there's times when I don't hear anything and I read the scripture and, 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 and it, it, it tells me the truth, but I'm not getting any revelation. I don't get any epiphanies out of it, but I just keep reading the word. Until he speaks, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Position yourself to hear. It's a position of the heart. Listen, this, this is crucial to any relationship. This is crucial to, to your relationship with the Lord. It's cru uh, crucial to your relationship with your spouse, your children. Within, and, and your attitude has to be right. You can't have a foul attitude. Well, come on, God. You better hurry up. He's not going to speak to you. You will not rush God. So your attitude has to be right. You have to have a willingness and give time to wait. Can I get an amen? I remember, <laughs> I remember when, <clears throat> when I first started to realize that I was having some issues with my physical hearing. I, I, I would, I, I would um, Tam would say something to me with her back to me, and I'd say, what would you say? And, and I'm like, what's going on, man? She's talking lower than she used to. And then she would say something else. I said, what'd you say, honey? And she'd repeat it. And anymore, if I have my back, I can't hear very many things behind me. If she's behind me, she says something, I can't hear anything. And, and, and she will say, Darren Powell. And when I hear Darren Powell, I realized I'm not hearing her well. She said, are you ignoring me or can you just not hear me? It didn't take very many times of that to realize I was in the wrong position. I was around her, but I wasn't before her. And I realized for me to hear my wife correctly, I got to be before her, not just around her. I can hear some rumbling when she's around, some muffle, but I can't make out what it is. But when she's before me, and I'm before her, I can hear her clearly. It isn't just enough to be around God. 
You need to be before God to hear him. Mm. Let, let, let me pull this text out. Uh, remember Martha and Mary in, in Luke uh, 10, 38 through 42? Now it happened as they uh, went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha uh, welcomed him into her house. And uh, she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. You don't sit behind somebody at their feet. You sit before somebody at their feet. Can I get an amen? But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached the Lord and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve all alone? Come on, God, get my, get my sister, get her real good because she's not serving you the way she needs. She's not serving you like I'm serving you, God. And the Lord said, he said, Lord, do you not care that, the, that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. One thing is needed, and that's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, some of you ladies don't have difficulty with that. But some of us guys, we have difficulty with that. It's like, man, that isn't very macho. That's almost not even cool. Well, you're looking at it the wrong way. You're looking at it as a man to a man instead of a father to a son. Everything with the Lord must always be viewed as father to daughter or father to son. And lose that egotistical pride or whatever it is that keeps us from seating ourselves at the Father's feet to listen to what He has to say. It says here that the one thing was sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing His word. That is the one thing that's needed is to place ourselves before the Lord to hear Notice Martha and Eli was around the Lord, but they didn't hear the Lord. Mary and Samuel placed themselves before the Lord, and they were the ones that heard. It isn't, again, Andy, I'm finished. It isn't enough to just be around the Lord. You have to be in front of the Lord. And I need to say this to the church tonight. Don't get satisfied with just being around him. Make sure you are before him. I remember, I remember my, when I was playing football in high school, that was a couple years ago, and, um, I remember my freshman year, uh, I, I was good enough to, to, to make the varsity traveling squad, uh, but I wasn't good enough to start as a freshman. And I remember thinking, if I can just keep myself where the coach can see me, sooner or later he's going to get tired of looking at my face and he's going to put me in. That was just a crazy idea that I had. And we were playing our arch rivals, Pinsboro, and we had a musket that we traded back and forth. And whoever won the game got the musket for that year. They didn't like us, and we didn't like them, and we were real close. We were only a couple miles apart. And I remember it was we were beating them pretty bad. And I'm thinking, man, there's a chance I might get in this game. And the thing is, if you played... In the varsity game against Pennsburg, you automatically lettered for the year. And I had a goal that I wanted to letter all four years in high school. Football, wrestling, and track. I wanted to wrestle all four years. 
So I'm thinking, hey, I have a shot at getting in this game, so I'm going to make sure that every time the coach turns around, he sees my ugly face. And I did. I'd follow him. I'd go everywhere he went, up and down the sideline. I made sure I was right there. And it didn't matter. I, I, I was offensive and defensive and tackle. But, hey, if he needed running back, I'll go in. You know, you, you need a safety, I, I'll try it. You know, but I was there every time he turned. And you know what? In the fourth quarter of the game, he turned around and said, Pow, come here. Get in there. I, want you to, I, went, I had no idea what I was even doing. But I lettered, I lettered my freshman, I lettered all four years in all the sports I ever played. But I lettered my freshman year in football because I kept myself in front of the one who had the authority. Listen. Forget how man can promote you. You keep yourself before the Lord. You listen to me. This is the story of my life. Man, I have something I want to say, but I don't want you to think I'm trying to be haughty. Do you know why I'm here? Is it because of how good I am or how great I am? It's just because I kept myself before the Lord. And it isn't about me. It isn't about my ability. It's just about your willingness to do it. I didn't have education. I, I didn't have the lineage. I didn't have anything except want to. When I found out that you could spend time in God's presence, there wasn't anything else any better. I made it my, I made it my heart work to spend time in His presence. Some days I succeeded, some days I failed at it. But you know, the days I failed at it, God never held it against me. But the more that I sought him, the more he wanted to be close to me. I think there's a passage of scripture that says something like this. Draw near unto me, God said, and I'll draw near unto you. When you put yourself before the Lord, he will get as close to you as you will allow him to be. So tonight, as you all stand your feet, I'm going to say this, and I don't want it to sound like I'm trying to tempt you or challenge you or beg you, but if you have a desire to hear from the Lord, I'm going to ask you to get around this altar tonight and let your request be made known to Him. Just ask Him for it. And keep yourself before the Lord. Wait on Him. Don't stop talking to Him. Don't stop getting in His face. Don't stop putting yourself before Him. Position yourself before Him. Your heart before Him. And decide to hear. And you will hear. So as Andy sings this evening, I want you to come. And make your request. If you want to hear from Him. Take me back to the garden Lead me back to the moment I heard your voice Bring me back to communion Lead me back to the moment I saw your face And it was all so simple It was easy to love have anything that you need to pray no for, would you come pray for me? Seriously? It was easy to would you just leave your seat and come pray for me? Because I need it. You are closer, closer than my skin. You are in the air I'm breathing in. Here's where the 
something that um, is a little uh, tricky for a pastor to ask. How many here are believe, believe that you're having difficulty hearing God? Raise your hand. Be real, be honest. First of all, let me say you're not abnormal. You're not, and there's nothing wrong with you. And you don't need to be ashamed. To be honest with you, I hope it's okay, but my wife has struggled with this for years. And all at once she'll say something, and I'm like, where'd that come from? Well, it was just a thought I had. It wasn't a thought. It was God. This is what I, this is what I want to say to you. You're hearing more than you think you're hearing. But the enemy has deceived you somewhere along the way to tell you that you're really not hearing. The key is this. Is that you don't stop talking to God. You don't stop putting yourself before Him. You must continue to put yourself before him. It's a decision that you have to make and you have to do it whether you feel like it or whether you feel anything or you don't. It isn't about what you feel and quite frankly, it isn't always about what you hear or you don't hear. But there is something that happens just by you putting yourself before him. Many times we have this thought that, well, God speaks this way or that way. Stop putting limitations on God. God can speak. He can speak through a donkey. Yeah. He, can, he, can, he can, God can speak through anything and anybody. The key is, is just put yourself in a position to hear. And I don't know why. Some people seem to hear. Sometimes I get aggravated with people. They're all the time hearing from God. And I'm thinking, well, you just must have a hotline to God. You must be really something special to God. God talks to you all the time. Well, aren't you special? And sometimes I want to slap somebody. I won't name any names. But that's just sometimes that's just how I feel. Well, can you believe your pastor would say that? You feel the same way sometimes, don't you? It liberated some of you. And you're not going to condemn me for feeling that way. But listen, I don't know why some people hear more regular than I, I don't know. This is what I know. God knows what I have need of. I'll tell you, I heard something 
I was listening to something going home last night after the deacons meeting the man that got on me. I'm thinking, oh God, have I missed you, God? Is there something wrong with me, God? All day long. All day long I've been on my face before God. When I say on my face before God, it doesn't mean I was walling around on the floor. It just means I made a decision to keep myself in his presence all day. I was crying out to God, oh God, just let me know. Give me a sign, God. Tell me. Speak to me. Do something, God. I want to make sure that you haven't pulled your Holy Spirit away from me, God. Sometimes I think we need to have these real conversations with God because I think we get too familiar and comfortable with Him. And I say, God, just, just let me know. Just, just, just let me know one thing. And, and I was, I finished up with the message today and I was doing something around the house and God dealt with my heart about something and, and I wasn't even thinking anything about it. So I come to service tonight and, and, and I did what he, what, 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 uh, uh, what he had revealed to me and, 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 and when, I, when I begin to ask the question, the person responded with this, and I have no clue about anybody's history. God said, see, you're still hearing me. But just because you don't hear me the way you want to hear me or receive the way you want to receive from me, it doesn't mean that I've pulled my Holy Spirit from you. It doesn't mean I'm not talking to you. So my point is, draw near to him. And he will draw near to you. And when he is ready, he will speak to you the way he wants to speak to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the peace of Almighty God would guard our hearts and mind. And we would now allow no place for the enemy to get in. I pray you bless your sons and your daughters. And I pray they would leave full of peace, wisdom, hope, and joy. And I thank you for it. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. You are dismissed. By God's grace, we'll see you Sunday morning. Thank you for being here tonight.